Smokey Robinson, the iconic, soulful singer, has traversed a full eight decades of life, all the while cloaked in the shroud of melancholy. A life filled with crests and troughs, love and heartache, has sculpted not only his existence, but also his illustrious career. Come with us as we step into the somber tapestry of Smokey's life, delving into the poignant emotions he endured. Let's get started. In the heart of the North End area of Detroit, Michigan, amidst the harsh reality of a poor family struggling to make ends meet, a young soul named William Robinson Jr. came into this world. His ancestry was a rich tapestry, woven with African-American, French, Nigerian, Scandinavian, Portuguese, and Cherokee roots, a testament to the diverse heritage that defined his being. Uncle Claude, the guiding light in young Smokey Joe's life, bestowed upon him a nickname that would become an inseparable part of his identity. Smokey Joe, they called him, a name that carried the warmth of his beloved uncle's love. It was a moniker rooted in a shared love for cowboy movies, an innocent bond formed during the formative years of Smokey's life. As he grew, Smokey's passion for music eclipsed all else. While Northern High School bore witness to his above-average academic achievements and determined athleticism, his heart yearned for the sweet melodies of life. He found his solace in the harmonious world of doo-wop music and created a group known as the Five Chimes, a testament to his early creative spirit. Living just houses away from the young Aretha Franklin on Belmont Street, Smokey had known the Queen of Soul since her tender age of five, listening to her play the piano as he visited her older brother Cecil in the early days of her family's Detroit residence. Smokey's love for music was kindled during his childhood, inspired by the enchanting tunes of Nolan Strongnamp, the Diablos and Billy Ward, and his dominoes that flowed from the radio. He often attributed his vocal prowess to the great Barrett Strong, a fellow Detroit native who left an indelible mark on his musical journey. In 1955, with the support of his childhood friend Ronald White and schoolmate Pete Moore, he laid the foundation of The Five Chimes, his first step into the world of music. Two years later, The Five Chimes transformed into The Matadors, and the group welcomed another key member, Bobby Rogers. Within their ranks, there was a familial connection with Claudette Rogers, Bobby's sister, and Smokey Robinson himself, who would later become Claudette's husband. The magical touch of Marv Tarplin, the group's guitarist, was added to the mix in 1958. The Matadors took to the stages of Detroit, honing their skills and building a name for themselves in the city's music scene. It was in those transformative years that they shed their old identity, and like a phoenix rising from the ashes, they emerged as the Miracles, a name that would go on to make music history. Smokey Robinson's personal life unfolded as a bittersweet symphony, marked by love, loss, and the echoes of time. In 1959, he took Claudette Rogers, a fellow Miracles member, as his bride. Their union brought forth the sweet melody of family as they welcomed two children into their world. A son, Barry Robinson, born in 1968, carried the name of Motown's founding father, Barry Gordy, an ode to the label that had shaped their lives. A daughter, Tamla Robinson, joined the family in 1971, her name a tribute to the original Tamla label, which Barry Gordy had eventually transformed into Motown. But behind the scenes, the chords of their love story were not without dissonance. Smokey Robinson admitted to having affairs with multiple women during his marriage to Claudetti, a painful revelation that cast a shadow over their union. Among these infidelities, there was an approximately year-long affair with the enchanting Deanna Ross. The illicit liaison ended, not because of its passionate intensity, but due to Ross's discomfort. She was a friend of Claudette, the woman Smokey confessed he still loved. It was a heartbreaking truth, a melody of love and pain that echoed through their lives. Diana Ross's representatives remained silent on Robinson's claims. 
and the story became a haunting reminder of the complexities of the heart. Smokey Robinson saw love as a multifaceted gem with the capacity to shine differently for various souls. Amidst the tumultuous notes of his marriage, Smokey Robinson also fathered another child, a son named Trey, in 1984, with a woman other than Claudette. The revelation shattered the already fragile chords of their relationship. Robinson admitted to this betrayal, and it led to legal separation, eventually concluding in a divorce that was finalized in 1986. Their marriage had seen years of turbulence, marked by both separation and affairs, the painful inspiration for the song The Agony and the Ecstasy, later featured on the album A Quiet Storm. The haunting lyrics whispered of the turmoil they had endured, a testament to the melancholic chapters of their love story. In May 2002, Smokey Robinson embarked on a new chapter, marrying Frances Gladney. Their life together took them to a home in Pittsburgh, a place where they nurtured their love and shared their passion for winemaking. It was a quieter, more tranquil melody, perhaps an attempt to find solace in the later years of life. Robinson's personal choices also bore the echoes of time. Since 1972, he had abstained from red meat, a decision that spoke to his commitment to a healthier life. He practiced transcendental meditation, a pursuit that seemed to offer a refuge from the turmoil that had marked his personal life. Smokey Robinson, a man with golden green eyes, believed that this unique feature had been passed down from his French great-grandmother. It was a reminder of the heritage that shaped his identity, a connection to a past that had faded like a distant refrain. Smokey's career journey is extremely interesting. Do you want to know? In the melancholic winds of August 1957, Smokey Robinson and the Miracles found themselves at the crossroads of destiny. They had just faced rejection at a heartless audition for Brunswick Records, their dreams seemingly shattered, scattered like shattered glass upon the cold, unforgiving pavement. But fate had other plans for it was on that fateful day that they would cross paths with a man who would change their lives forever, songwriter Barry Gordy. During that ill-fated audition, Smokey brought forth a Big Ten notebook, a repository of his dreams etched in ink. Inside lay the echoes of a hundred songs he had painstakingly written during his high school years, each note a testament to his unquenchable ambition. Gordy, with an ear attuned to the melancholic whispers of the soul, listened intently. He was not only impressed by Smokey's vocals, but he was also entranced by the audacious beauty of his songwriting. With Barry Gordy's guiding hand, the Miracles took their first trembling steps into the world of music. Their inaugural offering, Got a Job, was an answer song to the Silhouette's hit single, Get a Job, a retort to life's stark challenges and an ode to survival. It marked the beginning of a profound and enduring collaboration as they ventured into the dark abyss of the music industry. In those formative years, Smokey juggled his dreams with the mundane reality of everyday life. He sought solace in the hallowed halls of academia, enrolling in college in January 1959 with electrical engineering as his chosen path. Yet, the siren call of music proved too irresistible, too alluring to ignore. Only two short months passed before the Miracles released their first record, and Smokey's academic dreams faded away like distant echoes, leaving the harsh symphony of the world to fill the void. Barry Gordy, the visionary, went on to establish Tamla Records, which would later be reborn as the legendary Motown. The Miracles, although their association with Gordy predates Motown's inception, were among the first acts to grace the label's roster. It was in the twilight of 1960 that the group crafted their first hit single, Shop Around, a tune that resonated with the hearts of many and soared into the annals of music history, becoming Motown's first million-selling hit. For a decade, from 1960 to 1970, 
Smokey Robinson weaved his magic as the miracle's lead singer, chief songwriter, and producer. His soulful croons brought to life 26 top 40 hits, each note echoing with the whispers of longing and heartache. The arrival of the formidable songwriting team, Holland Dozier Holland, and the brilliant duo of Norman Whitfield and Barrett Strong ushered in a new era at Motown. In this evolving musical landscape, Smokey found himself eclipsed. His once dominant position as a top writer and producer for the label slowly fading into the melancholic embrace of the past. The Motown family, once his creative playground, began to resonate with the original compositions of artists like Gay and the young prodigy, Stevie Wonder. The songs he had poured his heart and soul into were now replaced by the raw, unfiltered emotions of others. His once prolific pen lay still, the ink of inspiration running dry. In the twilight of his career, Smokey Robinson turned his attention to writing lyrics and crafting melodies for others. He penned the words and music for The Contours, a shadow of his former self, and their track, First I Look at the Purse. He lent his melancholic touch to the Four Tops, composing Still Water, and to the Supremes, gifting them with the bittersweet Floy joy. The other miracles, his loyal companions through the highs and lows of life, joined him as co-writers on many of these hits. Pete Moore, a trusted friend, stood as his collaborator, even taking on the role of co-producer with Smokey in a somber symphony of their shared past. By 1969, the weary weight of the world had taken its toll on Smokey Robinson. The desire to retire from the relentless touring circuit grew within him, a longing to focus on raising his two children alongside his beloved wife, Claudette. He was tethered to Motown, not by choice, but by the haunting success of Tears of a Clown, a bittersweet reminder of the past. It was a song that kept him bound to the stage when all he truly yearned for was the quiet embrace of family life. The final curtain fell in July 1972 on a stage in Washington, D.C. It was the last performance with the group that had once been his sanctuary, his haven. Smokey Robinson, the soulful troubadour, had to say goodbye to the melodies and the audience he had loved so dearly a poignant farewell that resonated with the echoes of a fading era. In the quiet despair of his year-long retirement, Smokey Robinson re-emerged from the shadows in 1973 with a glimmer of hope, releasing his eponymous album, Smokey. The record carried with it the weight of nostalgia, as it paid tribute to the miracles with the poignant ballad, Sweet Harmony. It was a haunting reminder of a past that could never be recaptured, a time when harmonies flowed effortlessly and dreams were woven into melodies. The album also bore the melancholic strains of Baby Come Close, a ballad that echoed with the yearning of a heart that had seen its fair share of joy and sorrow. In 1974, Robinson offered a second album, Pure Smoky, but it failed to breathe life into his dwindling career. The music industry had transformed, leaving him behind like a ghost of his former self. His once mighty collaborators, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, and Eddie Kendricks, had become the shining stars, their music haunting the airwaves with hit after hit, while Smokey's melodies faded into obscurity. The world may have moved on, but there were those who still remembered the melancholic beauty of Smokey's music. Former Beatle George Harrison paid tribute to him in 1976 with the track Pure Smokey on his album 33 Amp 23, a testament to the enduring impact of Robinson's soulful ballads. Even his fellow Beatles, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, had been touched by his songwriting, covering You Really Got a Hold on Me in their own melancholic renditions. Smokey Robinson sought to answer his critics in 1975 with A Quiet Storm, an album that bore the weight of his struggle. It launched three singles, including the soulful cry of Baby That's Bacacha and the bittersweet The Agony and Amp The Ecstasy. The radio format Quiet Storm, which originated from DJ Melvin Lindsay, was named in homage to the album, 
a testament to the indelible mark Smokey had left on the world of music. However, his own solo career continued to suffer, eclipsed by his role as Motown's vice president. It was a bittersweet irony that the man who had once defined the label now saw his own music take a back seat. The years that followed were marked by a slow descent into obscurity for Smokey Robinson. Albums like Smokey's Family Robinson, Deep in My Soul, Love Brees, and Smokin' went largely unnoticed, victims of poor promotion and harsh reviews. At this juncture, Smokey found himself relying on other writers and producers, a stark contrast to the creative genius that had once flowed from his heart like a melancholic river of emotion. His music, once a testament to the human experience, had become a mere echo of a bygone era, a fading dream in a world that had moved on without him. The years that followed Smokey Robinson's previous albums were a desolate landscape, marked by a haunting writer's block that seemed insurmountable. It was a time when the creative well had run dry, and the melodies that once flowed freely had turned into a distant memory. The soulful tunes of the past had faded into the background, overshadowed by the changing tides of the music industry. But in the depths of his artistic despair, a glimmer of hope emerged. Marv Tarplin, a close collaborator and fellow miracle, joined Smokey on the road in 1973, offering a lifeline in the form of a haunting melody strummed on his guitar. It was the spark that rekindled the creative fire within Smokey, and he breathed life into the tune with lyrics that would become his first solo top 10 pop single, Cruisin'. The song, with its melancholic undertones, soared to number one in Cashbox and found its place at number four on the Billboard Hot 100. It was a haunting serenade, a testament to the enduring power of Smokey's voice. Even in the midst of his personal and professional struggles, he had the capacity to touch hearts and souls. Smokey Robinson followed a similar path with his next album, Warm Thoughts, crafting yet another heartfelt ballad, Let Me Be the Clock. Though it didn't quite reach the same heights as Cruisin', it carried the bittersweet essence that had defined his music. In 1981, Robinson ascended the charts once more, his soulful voice finding new life in the sensual ballad, Being With You. It was a hit that resonated deeply, reaching the pinnacle of success in Cashbox and rising to number two on the Billboard Hot 100. The song also etched its place in the UK singles chart, becoming his most successful single to date. It was a brief moment of rekindled glory, a respite from the melancholic journey of the past. In 1983, Smokey Robinson joined forces with fellow Motown label mate Rick James, recording the soulful R&B ballad Ebony Eyes, a haunting duet that spoke to the heart. The album itself became one of his most successful ever, selling over 900,000 copies in the United States alone. In that same year, as a testament to his enduring influence, the UK group ABC released a tribute song titled When Smokey Sings, a melancholic ode to the man whose music had touched the hearts of millions. The years that followed Smokey Robinson's glorious musical journey were marked by a poignant mix of triumphs and tribulations. In 1988, he achieved one of the highest honors a musician could hope for, induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist. Yet the recognition came tinged with melancholy, for it was a controversial decision. The Hall had inducted Smokey Robinson, but not the members of his beloved group, The Miracles. The omission cut deeply into Smokey's heart, a painful affront to the shared journey of harmonious souls. The rift between the artist and his group was a wound that festered over the years. In 2012, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Committee finally rectified this mistake, announcing that the miracles would be inducted on their own merit. Although Smokey was not listed as an inductee, he was slated to do the honor of inducting his former group at the ceremony. It was a bittersweet moment, 
a belated acknowledgement of the legacy he had forged with the miracles, and yet the years of estrangement had cast a melancholic shadow. Following the purchase of Motown by MCA in 1988, Smokey Robinson relinquished his role as vice president, severing the ties that had once bound him to the label. He released the album Love Smokey in 1990, but found himself at a crossroads. Seeking a fresh start, he signed a deal with SBK Records in 1991, but his album, Double Good Everything, failed to chart. It was a lonely path, and the melodies that once flowed effortlessly were now scarce and far between. The 90s were a decade of relative silence for Smokey, save for a notable cameo appearance in The Temptations' 1998 miniseries. He made a brief comeback in 1999, rekindling his association with Motown and releasing the album Intimate, a testament to his enduring love for music. The song Easy to Love became a whisper of the past, echoing in the corners of his career. In 2003, he once again parted ways with Motown, releasing a gospel album titled Food for the Spirit on Liquid 8 Records in 2004. It was a soulful endeavor, a reflection of his faith and the enduring power of music to heal the heart. Two years later, in 2006, Smokey Robinson released the album Timeless Love, a collection of standards that harked back to the soulful classics of yesteryears. It was a melancholic journey through time, an attempt to recapture the magic of the past. In 2009, he brought forth the album Time Flies When You're Having Fun on his own label, Robso Records. The record, reaching number 59 on the Billboard album chart, was his highest charting since One Heartbeat. It was a brief glimmer of the past, a reminder of the musical heights he had once scaled. A year later, in 2010, he released Now and Then, a wistful reflection on the passing of time. It reached number 131 on the charts, a poignant acknowledgement of the changing tides in his career. As the years marched on, Smokey Robinson's musical journey continued, marked by both bittersweet notes and moments of quiet reflection. In mid-August 2014, he offered Smokey and Friends, an album that resonated with echoes of the past. It was a collection of poignant duets, featuring voices like Elton John, Linda Ronstadt, and James Taylor. The album reached number 12 on the Billboard album chart, a testament to Smokey's enduring ability to stir the soul with his melodies. In the twilight of his career, Smokey unveiled Christmas Every Day in November 2017. It was his first post-Miracles Christmas album, a testament to the changing seasons of life. The album's melodies carried the wistful notes of the holiday season, a reminder of the joy and warmth that seemed to grow more distant with each passing year. In 2018, Smokey Robinson shared the stage with country singer Cam on an episode of CMT Crossroads. The meeting of their voices was a melancholic reflection of the diverse musical landscape that had evolved over the years. Amidst the echoes of his music, Smokey found time to give back. In April 2017, he ventured to Fremont Lopez Elementary School in Stockton, California, where he served as a designated arts mentor under Turnaround Arts. It was a poignant reminder of his enduring commitment to nurturing the creative spirits of the next generation. On July 31st, 2018, Smokey Robinson appeared as a special guest on the Fox Network's show Beat Shazam. It was a brief moment in the spotlight, a reminder of the man whose music had once lit up the world with its soulful glow. In 2019, he lent his voice to Make It Better, a song from Anderson Payak's album Ventura. It was a fleeting connection with a new generation of musicians, a bridge between the past and the present. In 2023, Smokey Robinson emerged from the shadows with a glimmer of hope, announcing his first album in almost a decade. Gassums was the title, and it promised entirely new music, a breath of fresh air in a career marked by nostalgia. 
the first single, If We Don't Have Each Other, had already begun to echo through streaming services by January 2023. What do you think about Smokey Robinson's life and career? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.